What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers back again. Try as they might, I ain't dead yet. Thank you all for clicking the video. Look, I've been getting a lot of great responses over the Rock Marciano Marcielago review. We got a little bit of traction on that one. Thank all of y'all that clicked that, contributed to the comment section. Uh, that really is helpful to the channel when you chime in and give your opinion. Uh, thumbs up is always helpful as well if that's something that you want to do. Uh, how are you feeling on that particular day? Yesterday, real quick, before I get into what I'm really here for, yesterday, I wanted to test out live. I've never done it before, so I just wanted to see how it worked out. Long story short, I tried to keep it private and send a link to some select people that I know in real life, and the link didn't work. So I said, you know what, fuck it. Let's turn this thing public, just so we could test it out, not thinking at all that people would show up and folks showed up, and we had a blast, man for uh, somewhat over an hour talking about this hip hop. It was all over the place. I had a really good time with it. Let me just, thanks to the people who actually chimed in to the live. D Official, D Official One, Rock Marciano's DJ. Uh, this is what he's telling me. I'm taking his word for it. I hope you had a great show last night. Thanks for chiming in last night. KRMC, who I believe is my very first subscriber, was in the building last night chopping it up. My man, I'm not gonna talk about this man's business too much, but he's he's a young guy and his ears work perfectly. You won't believe the type of shit this dude is on. He put me on to uh, a guy named Ad2, which I'm about to really go uh, deep diving on, that Ad2. My man Caesar 187 was in the building yesterday and he put me on to a guy named Zarface, and apparently he is uh, down with the Wu-Tang Clan, and he was in there giving some very positive vibes yesterday. Season 187, I see you, thank you for showing up. Case Kiri, I didn't even see this dude's comments. I'm so goofy on doing this live off the rip. No practice, just going live. Uh, I was having a hard time following the comments that was popping up. And Case Kiri, I missed you. And another thing about Case Kiri, he gave me a list of top 10 rappers. And check this out. It was a good list, and we're gonna talk about that list on a, on a future show coming up soon, because I wanna give you guys my top 10 list, and it's not gonna be rappers. I'm gonna take liberties with Case Kiri's analysis and say that he was talking about lyricists and not rappers, because that is what my list is going to be. It will be lyricists, my top 10 lyricists all time. And it's not gonna be rappers, a complete difference. Case Kiri, I'm thinking you came at me with the lyricist list, much respect, and we're gonna talk about that soon. Thanks for chiming in to that live yesterday. The official KRMC, season 187, I'm missing one. Anyway, let's move on to other topics. Uh, today was a very positive day for me. You know, when you put blessings out in the atmosphere, you put good vibes out, thing, good things happen to you. And, you know, I came into some, some moolah, a little bit of money, not a bunch, I didn't hit the lottery, but I got a tick up. <laughs> in my pockets. I got my weight up today. So put positive vibes out there. I'm gonna put some positive vibes out there for all of y'all, especially my subscribers. I wanna see y'all win. And if y'all start winning by using this concept of just putting out positive vibes, please put that in the comment section and let me know how that's working out for you because I truly believe that works. So I'm riding home today after having a very good day. I'm out handling business and I didn't even, I wasn't even listening. I listened to uh, some rock earlier in the day, some Benny earlier in the day in the car riding around, but I just was in an R&B mood today. So on the way back to the crib, it was time for a little bit of mid-tempo R&B. So I got into some Jeanne sending my love. If you don't know that song, if you one of my viewers, <laughs> if you one of the family and your ears work good, check out that Z-H-A-N-E. Name of the song is Sending My Love. That's what I was bumping on the way home and that put me in a great mood to come talk to you guys today. What are we doing here today? We are doing the review of the much anticipated debut album from Griselda, WWCD, What Would Sheen Do? I know I'm late on this. It dropped a little bit ago, but I wanted time to kind of live with it and live with it some more before I gave you my real rundown. This is about to be a real serious review. I hate to tell you, uh, I love these guys. I love this camp. I love what they're doing. I was listening to it today and was just amazed at the quality of the actual music. Not, not lyrics. I'm just talking about beats, the level of these beats showing me how serious they are about putting New York on the map and claiming, reclaiming their rightful throne. I got much respect to the beat selection alone from this camp. 
But this is going to be, I was thinking about this before I sat down to do this. This is about to be real serious. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. If I like one of the songs, I like it. If I like, if I don't like one of the songs or the beat or how somebody, I'm going to say it at the risk of maybe pissing some people off. And I'm, I'm, I'm going in only having heard some of these songs a couple times, two or three times. So let's get serious about this. I'm not going to destroy my own credibility by dick riding. We don't do that over here. I love what they doing. I'm supporting the movement. Why do I keep on talking about all this shit that's coming out of Buffalo and what's going on with Rock Marciano? Because that's the thing that's popping the most right now. Despite what these motherfuckers want to tell you, that's this is the thing that's popping. So we're about to get into this album. We're going to find out how popping it really is. Because coming up next, it's the Mike Powers review of the album, What Would Sheen Do by Griselda. Next. just get right into it before we get started how y'all like the big picture let me know in the comment section you like the bigger picture the smaller picture i'm just fucking around with this today let me know what you think uh what would sheen do the title of the album is a reference to benny's older brother i believe that was his older brother his name was machine gun he was tragically murdered i believe in buffalo and according to west side gun he was the heart of what Griselda's always been about. And him not being on the scene is very difficult. Uh, and so when they had this first release on Shady, they wanted to show honor to Sheen Gun, And that's why the name of the album is, what would Sheen do? The picture here is a real crackhead from Buffalo. <laughs> That's what Benny said on the show I saw him get interviewed for. That's supposedly a real crackhead. I hope my camera's not bouncing too much uh, as I'm leaning on my desk. But yeah, that's supposedly a real crackhead. I mean, don't get no realer than that, right? The first song on this album is called Marcello Intro. Marcello Intro is featuring Raekwon. Raekwon is on here talking that shit, giving props, dropping gems. And the more and more you listen to this, you realize that this is a blessing from on high. It's the official stamp and seal of approval from a certified legend saying yes i believe in what you're doing i like the movement keep pushing it forward and i got your back purposefully done putting raekwon on the very first track putting his stamp on griselda next song up is chef dreads i already did a reaction to this so you kind of already know how i feel about it but let me break it down after a fresh listen this thing is extremely aggressive it's fight music it's got that old boom bap style to it but updated boom bap west side comes on first and he tears into this motherfucker he firing shots all over the place benny coming in right behind him no chorus just back to back still sounded hungry conway jump on this bitch out of nowhere you already know what the fuck he sound like this song I love, and I'm going to give it my little rating system. I'm trying to really establish this, and somebody else might have already did it if they did. Pardon, but out of five bars, like on your phone, but with the lyrics, see what I'm trying to do here? Five bars. This is a five bar joint right here. Highly recommend Chef Dreads. On to the next one. Next song is Moselle. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Maybe it's some expensive shit I don't know how to say. Moselle. I didn't like the beat at all. I'm just going to be honest about that. Conway came on, and of course the lyrics was there. Benny came on, and that dude was sick with it. I want to read y'all some of the lyrics that Benny was saying real quick. He pulled this up. I had to move where the climate hot. I took the money off the corner and invested that in private stock. Bet you know I still run the kind of spot. Hustlers buy the bricks in the back and the front is just a tire shop. That's what I'm talking about when, I'm, when we talk about Bendy and the vivid imagery. So he bringing that to this project once again. Always sounding hungry. Uh, West Side came on, great voice, lyrics, eh. I could smoke to this. I thought I was real nice. I was just chilling on Saturday night. I could bump this. No burn in my whip though. And that's just how I feel about it. Next up is Cruiser Weight Coke. Beat is different. It's slow. It's grimy. It take a little bit of getting used to, but you'll get in the pocket real quick on this one. Listen, <laughs> Benny came on this joint. I made the stank face about 15 seconds into this verse. I mean, the lyrics, the lyrics once again, and I don't do justice to this by reading it, but I'm going to read this to y'all. So y'all see exactly what's going on with Benny and this album. So this dude said, Ran it up because I trap a lot. These niggas know about the cash I got, but my pug's still playing broke. He in an Old Navy and an Apple Watch. When I'm getting in the fish weight, I don't need bait or a tackle box. I'm a real dope boy, nigga. On my birthday, I got a half a block. On my birthday, I got a half a block. Street Corners. 
<laughs> my man, Benny, you killing him out here. And I want to say something else about what's going on with Griselda right now. This little sidebar. Listen, I thought about this. Y'all got to stop releasing so many songs. And not because I'm having a hard time kept catching up with the catalog. That's one reason. But I listened to a couple of cuts today that, I don't know, I hadn't listened to them in a while. And I forget what the name of those songs were. Forgive me. But I'm like, this song is so epic. Y'all keep on dropping epic single after epic single after. Y'all doing it too quick. Make a motherfucker wait like a month, two months, three months. And then drop another epic junk. As many shits as y'all done drop, it's artists that didn't have mega careers and only had three of them junk, maybe four. I mean, Chingy had a nice run. He had like two or three songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all killing the game right now. Spread it out. Make motherfuckers miss you because they taking that greatness for granted is what's about to start happening. It's just too much greatness and they becoming desensitized to it. Make a motherfucker wait. Like how long was it between projects when Nas dropped one mic and then when one mic came out, <laughs> everybody else, y'all could just don't even worry about it. We got this. One mic was that deal for such a long time and it was an epic occasion when it dropped. And you know, Nas got tons of epic joints. He's spacing them out. Jay-Z made a joke about that, but ain't nothing funny about the way Nas has carried on with his career. I like it. It's called curating the sound and i need griselda to do a little bit more curating i do like this song cruiserweight coke i recommend it next song is freddie hotspot first voice you hear on this <laughs> the butcher coming nigga first thing you hear i'm like uh oh and that's what you should be saying this song go hard as fuck i don't even need to tell you what benny do on this shit if i use the word vivid one more time i'm gonna slap the shit out myself that's the only thing i can only word i could use to describe this shit it's so fucking detailed god damn uh, and if you don't like this song, if you don't think this is a banger when you hear it, listen, the beat is, it rides kind of slow and, and a little bit grimy again, but it got them piano touches on it. And if you don't think this is a banger, you need to go jump off a cliff because you're not doing nobody no favors. You're not teaching nobody nothing. If you can't hear this shit, just stop right now. And your tracks, Conway, let me not get to Conway. Westside, me and KRMC, shout to KR, subscriber. We had a conversation about this man's voice and he asked me, did you like his voice when you first heard it? And I had to be honest, nah, I was trying to get used to what was going on with it. And then I realized that he knows how to use that instrument very well. He ain't the best rapper. I think he will be the first one to admit it, but it's the realism in there. And then the way he uses his voice, it's master. And K all said to me, this guy sounds like Ghostface. I can hear some Ghostface in there, uh, but I think this guy is, he's more on beat than Ghostface. And if you know me, you know, I don't like people rapping off beat. I do like Ghostface, but sometimes he could be very distracting in terms of rhyming off beat. Kind of, God damn, this is like some smooth gangster shit that you need to wear a tuxedo to rock out to or a bubble coat and a scully at night riding in the four door. That's what this kind of music is. Maybe you're on your way to go do some shit. Don't do too much. I want to see you free, but this song right here, it go real hard. Next song is Dr. Birds, or maybe it's DR Birds. It wasn't no period after the DR, but whatever. I hated the beat. I hated the drums. Like, goddamn. And that was starting to disappoint me. Uh, West Side came on. Uh, first of all, West Side Guns ad libs is next level first things first and then he got to flowing masterfully again i said this guy wasn't the best lyricist but he strung together some lyrics on this shit right here and then i started to fucking like the beat y'all seen this happen to me plenty of times before it happened again i fell in love with the beat here come conway relaxed just talking to him but just hardcore shit but in such a civilized elegant fashion who is virgil they mentioned virgil well, maybe i don't want to know who virgil is i started to realize when i'm listening to conway that the beat is perfect the beat is perfect for what they doing. It's, it's a match made in heaven. Hats off to these masters of hip hop. They are not to be played with. They know what they doing. And as I'm listening to this song, I'm starting to think the Mob Deep era is officially back. Ain't no, maybe they bringing it back. No, it's back. Real talk. It's stronger than it was when it was first out back in 94. It's strong. And I'm going to stop even discussing what the fuck Benny does on songs because I don't have nothing else to say. This is what I'm going to start saying about Benny. Oh yeah, Benny was on this joint. What you want me to say? It's Benny. That's all the fuck I'm going to keep saying. It's Benny. If you don't know what that means. Wrong channel. Next song is Old Groove featuring Novel. This just didn't do it for me. I mean, the lyrics is all right. It just ain't touched me. It was a beat switch 
at the end that intrigued me. I thought maybe it was going to pull me back. I started to realize then, yo, this is why it's called Old Groove because the next beat that they flipped to got an old groove to it. I think that's novel coming on singing and doing some rapping. Is that the same novel that did the album with Joel Ortiz back in the day? Uh, we talked about this on live. It's called Define the Predictable. Is that the same novel? Let me know in the comments section. He was all over the place. Some of it was good. Some of it was a little bit confusing. I feel like maybe I'm going to listen to this about 10 more times and parts of it will grow on me but it's not touching my heart and that's not a horrible thing to say about a song on this album because everyone ain't gonna be a banger in my eyes right um you're not gonna score every single time out the box you might like it wasn't my cup of tea next joint is scotty's this is classic timbo music it, these dudes got more songs <laughs> they got more songs for riding on the way to the jack move you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying when you on your way to do something bad they got a song for you. They got a lot of songs for you. And I said I wasn't going to say nothing about Benny except for it's Benny. But I got to hit you with these lyrics. He said, I rose from the streets. I did the most with the least. My team had the best numbers when the coke wasn't cheap. Fuck your plugs, plug, because I can get both numbers beat. It's 500 a bottle, but the hoes want it for free. That's not even doing justice because he goes so deep in his verse, man. It's Benny. Next song is called Kennedy featuring Tiana Denise. Quite frankly, this song is just West Side Gun and Tiana singing back and forth, blow your fucking face off. And West Side is singing this shit off beat than a motherfucker. Just off beat as all get out. And Tiana is singing... It's, it's beautiful. Seriously, just them two singing the words, blow your fucking face off, is beautiful. It really is. The next joint is City on the Map featuring 50. I was prepared to hate on this because I just think 50 is probably past his prime. I was pleasantly surprised. Conway gets busy on this. Essentially, this is just Conway and 50. Conway goes first. 50 brings it home. The, was it top-notch lyrics from 50? No. But did he hold his own? Yeah. I could ride to this, put my stamp on it. I got this face on because I just got done listening to May Store featuring Keisha Plum. This is what the fuck I want to say about that song. First off, this is New York. For y'all niggas that's out there in New York, call yourself rapping, trying to get signed, get deals, riding waves. This is New York right here. May store. I didn't like the fucking beat. And these niggas get the fucking spitting and then they make my head nod. Fucking geniuses. This is what New York's supposed to sound like. Not that other shit y'all trying to do, trying to catch other niggas waves and shit. This is what the fuck you was born and raised on. And this is the thing y'all too scared to fuck with. Y'all rather mess with the easy shit. Just simple fucking melodies and some fucking auto tunes. Repeat the same shit over and over again and continuously using words like drip. Remember when it was swag? Niggas couldn't get enough of? New York, listen up. Up. This is New York. Listen to May Store and take your ass back to fucking school. Conway might have delivered his best verse on this whole album. Conway went into psycho mode on this motherfucker. Chills up my spine. I still can't wrap my brain around what the fuck I just heard. And then here come West Side. God damn it. And Keisha Plum does the poem at the end, which is like something I never heard before. You just have to listen to this motherfucker. This shit goes so hard. These cats is putting motherfuckers on notice. Study it. They're giving you the fucking blueprint, but I'm pretty sure because this shit won't sell 8 million fucking copies and it won't get 145 million fucking clicks. Some of y'all gonna say it's not hot because of that. And you don't know what the fuck you talking about. May store. The last song, according to the official track listing that I found on YouTube from Griselda Records' own shit, is Bang Remix featuring Eminem. Conway went bananas on this joint. M came on and slaughtered it, even though it was a couple of parts in there I really didn't like, especially at the end when M decided to bring some Eminem-style music to an otherwise pretty gangster East Coast track. I don't know why he did that, but even... With that slip up, was just my opinion, it's a slip up. M still murdered it. And that's a really, really good song. So my overall take on this album, I'm looking at my notes here where I got check marks and stars all over the place. Is this a classic? It's pretty damn close. I'm gonna give it four and a half bars. This is a monster debut from the Griselda camp. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a fan because I listened to these songs before and actually was in the mind state where I was gonna say, you know what? This really is not for me because I didn't really do a deep dive on the beats the first time. I didn't focus hard enough to what was going on. This music that we listen to is for people 
people with some sort of intelligentsia. Let's not ever get that fucked up. The smartest motherfuckers that's listening to hip hop is listening to this kind of shit. And I need to remember that even when I'm listening to it, I got so much going on in my life sometimes I'm listening to things so I could react to them for you guys. And maybe I'm not doing all I can to just sit back and enjoy what these wonderful artists is bringing me. So before each and every song that I talked about, I actually listened to it before I spoke about it in order to bring y'all a fresh perspective on what I really felt about it. And I really dwelled on this shit. So at the end of the day, again, 4.5 stars. I got a live show coming up pretty soon later on this week. I hope you could join me for that. I'll let you know in advance as much as I can. If not, just, you know, make sure your notifications is popping. So when I do go live, you can be there with me and let's talk this hip hop, chop it up. But until next time, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.